The world is catching fire. That's why the House of Representatives must move now on that Senate-passed bill delivering aid to Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Months ago, the Senate passed legislation providing $95 billion of urgently needed assistance to Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan, three beleaguered democracies. Ukraine especially needs help as Russia gladly sacrifices manpower to grind down Ukrainian resistance. Russia is getting lots of first-class weaponry from North Korea, Iran, and surreptitiously China. Russia's own weapons production is improving in quality and quantity. House Speaker Mike Johnson won't let this bill come up for a vote because a number of GOP members don't want to help Ukraine. They're threatening to bring Johnson down as Speaker if he lets the bill go to the floor for an up or down vote. Despite opposition from various Republicans, as well as from a growing number of anti-Semitic Democrats, the legislation would overwhelmingly pass. We'll leave it to future psychologists and psychiatrists to figure out the strange affinity of certain Republicans for Vladimir Putin. But for the sake of our security and that of the free world, this bill must become law pronto. In the immediate aftermath of this weekend's unprecedented Iranian air attack on Israel, the world wants to see if the U.S. can rise to meet the most serious challenge to a benign world order since the 1930s, when fundamental mistakes led to the Second World War. Sure, the various missiles were intercepted, but the Iranian octopus and its various tentacles, like Hezbollah and the Houthis, have significantly more firepower in store and are getting militarily stronger. This weekend was a test, a military dress rehearsal, if you will, for much, much worse to come, especially if Iran is allowed to become a nuclear power, something which the Biden crowd seems willing to accept. But Israel won't, and that's why a wider war is likely. Also, China is taking cues from our reaction as it figures out how it can subdue Taiwan, perhaps by repeating what it tried to do in the 1950s when it considered invading crucial neighboring islands near Taiwan. And here we get to something Republicans don't want to hear but must. The craven refusal of Biden to deal with the disaster of his open border policy, where it's likely thousands of potential terrorists are streaming into our country, shouldn't preclude our helping Ukraine. One national security disaster shouldn't be an excuse not to deal with another threat. That is, the post-World War II security system that put Europe out of the cockpit of traditional power politics that had led to two world wars and had cost hundreds of thousands of American lives. Today, it is inconceivable that Germany and France would go to war against each other. But this miracle would be threatened if Putin is not resisted and European countries begin to perceive that they cannot rely on the U.S. and must start to make their own individual security arrangements. Bottom line, it's all well and good to consider other ways to help Ukraine, such as loans or seizing Russian frozen assets. But that's in the future. We need that Senate bill to pass the House now. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.